Hi friends, my name is Katie and I'm part of the team here at South Point. I was asked to share a little bit about myself, so I figured I would start with my biggest trial. My husband and I had been married for about a year when we decided to start trying for a family. Like most couples, we assumed that it would be super quick, super easy, but that's not what God had in store for us. We tried for about a year and then we decided to seek the help of a professional. When I went to see, before I went to see the professional, I decided to Google my symptoms, which is not recommended. I went to the doctor and I told her what I felt was wrong with me. She told me, you're not a doctor. You have no idea what you're talking about. Stay off of WebMD. And she asked me to leave. I left and I was devastated. The one person that was supposed to help me was the one that was just sending me away with no answers. I went home and I cried and I prayed and I prayed and I cried. And my husband said, you know what? We need the opinion of a second doctor. So that's what we did. I scheduled an appointment with a new doctor and I went to see her. When I went to see her, I did not say a word. She looked at my chart. She looked at my symptoms and she said, you know what? I think you have endometriosis. And I said to her, you know what? I think I have endometriosis too. Endometriosis is a disease and it attacks a woman's insides. And it's one of the leading causes of infertility. The only way to diagnose endometriosis is through surgery, so she scheduled me a surgery. My surgery was supposed to be between 5 to 6 hours long, and my surgery was like between 45 minutes and an hour long. When I woke up, I knew something was wrong. The doctor came in and she told me that my endometriosis was so intense, she was uncomfortable touching it. So, she decided that she would take a video and she would send it to the professionals at Duke Raleigh University and she wanted me to go there to talk to them. So off to Duke Raleigh I went. The head of gynecology was there and he looked at my video and he said he has never in all his years of experience seen endometriosis as terrible as mine. He said there was, if he was able to clear out my endometriosis, there was a chance that I would still never get pregnant and if I did get pregnant, I would never carry a baby to term. To say this was heart-wrenching and devastating is an understatement. The only thing I had wanted to be in my life was a mother, and now this man was telling me there was a very high possibility. It was never going to happen for me. So, off to the surgery we went. It was a was supposed to be, again, a 5-6 to six hour surgery. It ended up being over a 12-hour surgery. Everything that could have ever possibly gone wrong in my surgery went wrong in my surgery. They nicked an artery. I needed five or four pints of blood. I was sent to ICU. It was just terrible. It came back out and he said that he cleared out what he could clear out. It was the worst he'd ever seen. And again, he still didn't think I was going to be able to get pregnant. We were angry. We were hurt. We were mad at God. The one thing my husband and I did was that we probably shouldn't have done is we withdrew from church. We withdrew from our friends. We lived in a military town and it felt like everybody was pregnant. It hurt just to go to church because you just saw how everybody was happy and it wasn't their fault that they could get pregnant. It wasn't our fault we couldn't get pregnant. But it just, it hurt. The hurt and the pain was so bad, we just couldn't go. Luckily for us, we had a ton of people that prayed for us. We had a ton of people that were there for us, that called us, that, you know, texted us to tell us that they were praying for us. There was a ton of people that were just there for us and prayed when we couldn't pray. They were strong when we couldn't be strong. And the church made us and our situation better because when we were weak, they were strong. And I know that sounds cliche, but it's the truth. That's how it was for us. So after that surgery, I ended up having another surgery. So four surgeries total between when all this started and, you know, when we finally finished. We decided, you know what, it might not be, you know, what God wants for us to have a natural baby. So we decided to proceed with adoption, which was never our second choice. We always have wanted to adopt. So we started the process of adoption and lo and behold, we got pregnant. Of course, we were nervous and we were high risk and... You know, in our minds, we kept hearing, oh, you're never going to carry this baby to term, uh, so on and so forth. So, and all this ended at the end of uh, 2013. In 2014, we ended up pregnant, or 2014, we ended up delivering our baby full term, born on his due date, nine pounds, seven and a half ounces, completely healthy baby boy. And we are so blessed and so thankful. 
and the only way that we made it through these two years of pure hell for lack of a better word was because of our church and because we're better together because we have people praying for us because people cared about us and they checked in on us because honestly I don't know if we would have made it through I don't know if we would be where we are today just delivering baby number three if we didn't have people praying for us um, if you or somebody you know is battling infertility don't do it alone don't do it really any trial alone reach out to your small group to your pastor to you know the leaders in our church reach out to anybody that you can ask them to pray for you I'd love to pray for you my husband would love to pray for you if you're battling infertility please don't hesitate to reach out to us your business is confidential with us so I just wanted to let you know that you know God answers prayers he answers prayers differently so your answer might not be a natural baby, your answer might be adoption. It might not be either of those. It might just be God giving you comfort in not having any children and being the best aunt or uncle you could be. Either way, what I'm trying to get at is that we're better together. So reach out to your church, reach out to your small group, lean, lean on God and lean on the followers of Christ to help you through any type of situation that you're going through.